Welcome back to my online coaching program. Once again, I cannot thank you enough for being a part of this program. It means the world to me that you think that I can help you catch more fish. And I hope that all the content so far has helped you catch fish. Today, we're gonna talk about finesse football jigs. I think a finesse football jig is a great complement to the rod and reel that we discussed at the beginning of this program. And I just wanna keep building upon that rod and reel setup and show you how versatile it is and give you a lot of different options that you can go out and buy and catch fish and learn how to fish effectively and have success on a number of different baits with minimal investment into fishing. And as you get better and as you grow in your fishing, you can then start to buy more combos, more specific combos to the different reels and all that and different rods to suit those specific baits a little bit better. But in this one, I wanna keep building and we're gonna talk finesse football jigs. Now, when I'm talking about finesse football jigs, I'm not talking about anything special. It's basically what I'm referring to is just a lightweight football jig. It could be a quarter ounce, it could be a three eighth ounce. I think those are gonna do fine on that rod and reel that we've been discussing. And today I've got a three eighth ounce green pumpkin purple stand up football head jig. And then I got a black and brown standard football jig. Um, I think that these would do great on that rod and reel combo that I was describing. And I wanna tell you how to fish these, how to set up that rod and reel, what size line, all the ins and outs that are gonna make you successful fishing this technique. So when it comes to these finesse football jigs, let's talk color first. You know, this is a green pumpkin purple color. You can't go wrong with anything that's like green pumpkin and purple. And then this one right here is black and brown. It's mostly brown with a little bit of black in the, in the skirt. These two colors, you can pretty much get away with on any body of water. You know, it'll work great in those clear and stained waters. When you get into the dirty water, you're gonna wanna go maybe with the black and blue color. It's gonna help stand out in that dirty water. You know, personal preference is gonna come into play here big time. Um, a lot of guys like to throw brown with maybe purple or brown with orange or brown with red or green pumpkin with orange or green pumpkin with blue. There's gonna be some personal preference that comes into play but I like to keep it simple. These are two colors I always have in my box. I always have a brown and purple, and then a black and blue is I'm gonna add to that box depending on water clarity. Now when it comes to what sizes you wanna throw, for the rod and reel that we specifically are talking about in this coaching program, or anything close to it, I would say 3 8 is about as heavy as you're gonna to wanna to go. When you're fishing a jig, on a spinning rod, that 3 8 ounce is gonna get you pretty much as deep as you're gonna need. With a casting rod, you're gonna wanna you know, go heavier than a 3 8 ounce, but when we're talking finesse, we're talking spinning rods, that 3 8 ounce is gonna be about as heavy as I'd recommend, and then for your lighter presentations, you can definitely go down to a quarter ounce football head. Now, depending on whether you're gonna add you know, a trailer to it, which I would recommend, I would recommend you know, throwing a double tail grub or even a beaver style trailer, something small to keep this with a nice compact profile. You could even trim the skirt if you wanted to. There's different styles of finesse jigs out there, but when I'm talking finesse, I'm basically talking about a light jig. I'm not saying that you need to go out and buy one that's specifically called a finesse jig. Now, obviously it's a finesse jig, that's what it's called, so it's gonna suit this technique. But even if you just had a jig just like this and you just put a trailer on it and casted it out there, it's light enough that you can consider it a finesse jig. I think that keeping in mind and keeping it simple is paramount for this coaching series. Now, there's finesse jigs on the market, there's regular football heads, there's brush jigs, there's all kinds of different jigs, but I'm trying to break it down and keep it simple for you guys in this coaching program. So that's why I'm staying, saying stick with the football heads, stick with the quarter ounce, and stick with the three, three eighths ounce. So when it comes to these trailers that you're gonna put on these jigs, I would recommend trying to match the activity of the fish. What I mean by that is if the fish are more active, you're gonna to wanna to go with a more active jig trailer. That could be something like a double tail grub or something that has you know, that crawdad appearance that has a lot of movement. If those fish are active, you're gonna want a trailer that has a lot of movement. Now, if maybe the water's cold or the fishing's tough and those fish aren't as active, that's when you're gonna to wanna to scale down. You wanna go with something that's a little bit more of a subtle presentation, something like, you know, a smally beaver or something like that in that, you know, compact, low movement presentation. You just wanna match what the fish are doing. So if they're, if they're real active, you want a real active trailer. If they're not active, you want a less active trailer. 
Now there's tons of different options when it comes to jig trailers. You can go online and there's a ton of different ones out there. I'm gonna talk about my favorite, which is the double tail grub. This is a Yamamoto double tail grub in green pumpkin with black flake. This is my all time favorite jig trailer. It's super simple, there's not much to it, but it flat out catches fish. The other jig trailer that I use is a Smalley Beaver. It's, it's a beaver style trailer. You know, I'll, I'll have a picture of one with an example of the link to purchase, you know, in the, in the email that's associated with this video. I really think that those two trailers pretty much cover the gamut on what you absolutely need. Now, of course, there's other trailers out there that might work better in certain scenarios. However, I think that if you had those two in your box, you pretty much cover all your activity that you need to. So the double tail grub for those active fish and then a beaver style trailer for your less active fish. Now, when it comes to colors, you can't go wrong with green pumpkin. If you're trying to keep it real simple, I would buy a green pumpkin color and I would buy a black and blue color if you're fishing around that darker, that, that dirtier water. But green pumpkin is the only jig trailer color that I carry. Now, there might be certain places I go where I might buy a specific color for a specific location, but that's after I do research and I find out that I need that color. But when I'm just traveling around, going to a lot of different places, pretty much green pumpkin is my go-to. This is super simple to put on. I'll show you right now. What I wanna do first is I'm gonna show you the completed jig with the trailer on it so you know what you want it to look like at the end of, the, end of threading this thing on there. This is what you want it to look like all said and done. You want those legs to be just flat like that, and then I'm gonna spin it around so you can see it from the front. This is what you want it to look like. You want this trailer to be nice and straight on the shank of that hook. You don't want it all bunched up on one side. You want the hook coming out of the middle of the bait. This is what you want it to look like. So now let me thread this thing on here from the start so you know how to do it yourself. All right, so I took my double tail grub off of my jig, and now I'm gonna show you how to thread that thing on. So what I like to do is I like to turn my jig upside down and get the skirt to fall all towards the head of that jig. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my double tail grub in position and I'm gonna push it right through the weed guard so the hook comes out of the weed guard. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that hook point right in the middle of my plastic. You want it right in the middle and then I'm gonna thread that thing down the shank of the hook and I'm gonna have it come out right towards the bottom of the double tail grub. I'm gonna thread this thing right up the shank of the hook all the way to the top. I'm gonna to make sure it's all nice and straight on my, on my hook. I'm gonna get my skirt all back together so it's laying nice. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that this thing looks right, it's positioned right, and now this thing's ready to fish. As you can see, it's all nice and uniform. The presentation's nice and smooth. It's not bunched up on one side. This thing's ready to go. This thing's gonna catch fish. So that green pumpkin trailer is gonna work on your brown jigs. It's gonna work on your green pumpkin jigs. So that's a pretty versatile color to have in your box. Like I said a moment ago, getting that black or a blue color trailer is gonna be good for your black and blue jigs. You kinda of want everything to match. You want it to look natural. So you want the, the colors to complement one another. I think that's pretty important. But I want you to keep it simple. I don't want you to go out and, and buy a ton of different colors to mix and match because I think that gives you too many options. You're gonna worry about the color rather than am I working this bait right? Am I picking the right spots to fish this thing? I think those things are much more important than it is to have green pumpkin purple, green pumpkin black, green pumpkin red, green pumpkin blue. I think the more important thing is to get a green pumpkin color that you have confidence in, paired up with a jig color that you have confidence in. Make sure those two colors complement one another and it has a natural presentation. Looks like a typical color that a fish would eat go out, practice with it, have confidence that what you're doing is right, that you're giving the fish something that it would want to eat, something that you feel confidence with. And at that point, you're gonna be in tune, more effective with that bait. And I think that confidence that you're bringing to the table is gonna give you a better chance at catching a fish. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the rod, the reel, and the line. So this rod is the same rod that we've been talking about so far in all the videos. I did change up the reel. This is the Shimano NSCI. Um, either one, either any rod or reel combo that complements what I've described already is what you wanna look for. 
What I think is real key with fishing this finesse jig and this spinning rod is that you're gonna want to go with braid to fluorocarbon. You're gonna wanna be able to drive the hook into the fish's mouth with the spinning rod. You're gonna need to set the hook hard. This is not a situation where you wanna do a real set technique like you can with a drop shot or something like that. This is a situation where you wanna set the hook and get a solid hook set, solid mount of hook through that fish's mouth to give you the best chance at landing that fish. So what I'm gonna to talk to you about now is what to do with your line in order to give you the best success. So like I said a second ago, the major factor here is you wanna go with that braid as your main line and do the fluorocarbon leader. The, the braid here is gonna give you the sensitivity that you're looking for when fishing a jig, and it's also gonna give you the ability to set that hook really well. When you go with that fluorocarbon, my suggestion is to go with eight pound test. That eight pound test is gonna be key. It's gonna give you that extra strength that you're gonna want when you do set that hook where that six or that five pound may break on you and that's not what you're looking for. You definitely don't wanna miss those jig fish because a lot of times those jig fish are gonna be your better quality fish. So pairing up that solid 12 pound test, 15 pound test braided line to at least an eight pound test. If you can get away with 10 and cast the knot through well, you know, I'd even suggest going up to that 10 pound. I have fished, you know, that quarter ounce finesse jig on eight pound test and had good results. So I think that's a solid, um, line strength that you can go with. I think you'll have good results with that, but if you can get away with the 10, there's no reason why you shouldn't go with 10. Now, if money is a factor and you don't want to have all these different line sizes, I would definitely suggest you have a couple. And I think that that six and that eight are going to cover pretty much all the different techniques that we're going to be talking about in this series. And I think you want to have that six and eight because it gives you a little bit of strength with a little bit of that finesse, but not too much strength where you're overdoing it for your rod. I think that that six and eight is gonna pretty much cover, you know, all the stuff that we're talking about. It's gonna let you fish those finesse. It's also gonna let you fish these jigs that we're talking about today. So when it comes to that 10 pound test, one thing I wanna caution you with is when you tie that connection knot with that 10 pound test, be aware and take notice of how that line and that connection knot cast through your guides. Sometimes if you get too heavy a line, the knot on that connection knot starts to get a little bit too big and then it starts catching on these guides and you don't get you know, those long casts that you're looking for. So pay attention to that. If you're having casting issues, switch back down to that eight pound test and that should solve it. Okay, so let's say we got our rod ready to go, our reel spooled up with good braided line. We got our fluorocarbon connection knot ready to go, our leader's the right size and we tied on our jig. You know, now we're headed to the lake. What are we looking for? Where are we gonna fish this thing? And the main thing I want to guide you in is to look for rock. These jig fish like to be around rocks. Now there are brush jigs that are available on the market. There's grass jigs. There's all kinds of different jigs that are out there. But when we're talking football jigs, we're talking finesse. I think looking for those rocks is very important. Most of my jig bites always come around rocks. And when you're fishing that jig, you wanna keep it so you feel all those rocks that's paramount. You need to feel the bottom. You need to feel whatever structure you're fishing around. And you're going to want to almost count all those different bumps that you feel along the way. So if you're fishing rocks, you want to feel it come up that rock. You want to feel it hit the top of that rock. You want to feel it come down the other side of that rock. Because when you do that, you're really in tune with what this jig's doing on the bottom. And you're going to be able to tell the difference between it coming up and over a rock and that fish hitting that bait. And then you can set that hook. So that's something you really want to do. I like to call it counting rocks. So you're kind of, okay, it's going up over one. Okay, now I'm dragging it a little bit further, up over two, up over three, and so on. So I assume that a lot of you might have YouTube different, or search YouTube for different, you know, jig tutorial videos or something like that. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of people fish a jig with the rod tip high up in the air. And that's okay, but I want to throw out another option for you. I've fished the jig with the rod tip up in the air, but I've also fished a jig with my rod tip down low. For me personally, and this is something I encourage you to try and find out which one works best for you, is to fish that jig, that jig with the rod tip down low. And the reason I say have it down low is because when you get that bite, you're already in a position to set the hook. Because when you get that bite on a jig, you wanna set that hook right away. That fish got that bait, you know, the jig's pretty small, so when it bites it, that thing's in its mouth. 
So you get that bite and then boom, you're setting the hook. So when your rod tips up and up in the air, think about it. When your rod tips up in the air and you get that bite, you're gonna have to reel down and then set the hook. It doesn't seem like a lot of time, but that is enough time for a fish to bite and let go of that bait and then you miss that fish catch. But when that rod tips down low and you get that bite, you're in a position already to set the hook on that fish. So when you get that bite, you can just rear back, set that hook, drive that hook home and start reeling and catching that fish. I really encourage you to try it with the rod tip down low. I really encourage you to try it with the rod tip up and find which one works best for you. But I just don't want you to always think that you have to have that rod tip up. You can have that rod tip down and I think it just gives you a little bit more time to, to get a good hook set. Because I, I think that if you have that rod tip low and you don't have to take the time to reel down and then set the hook, I think it gives you the ability to maybe not realize you got bit right away and still gives you that a little bit extra time to then set the hook. But if you're really in tune, you're paying attention, you're counting those rocks, you should notice when you get that bite, it's gonna feel different than those rocks. That's why I want you to be in tune. And I want you to count those rocks so when you notice a feeling that's different than that, you can set the hook because it's probably gonna be a fish. And no matter what, so if you have the rod tip up high or you have the rod tip down low, what you wanna make sure of is that you have semi-slack line. This part is key. These jig bites can be, you know, rip the rod out of your hand type bites, but it also can be, you know, soft enough that the only thing that you see is your line skipping on the water. You don't feel it, you just see that line tick away or you see the line start to move off. And this is where that semi-slack line comes in huge. You don't want a bunch of slack in your line because then you're not gonna be able to feel anything. You don't want it too, too tight so that way it takes away from the presentation of the bait or that fish feels you, you know, putting that pressure on the bait. So you want that semi-slack line so that way there's, there's enough slack in it that it has a natural look in the water, but it's also tight enough that you can still feel something happen or see something happen when that fish bites. Now basically what I'm saying when I say semi-slack line is basically you just want a nice subtle little bow in the line. You don't want it all piled up on the top of the water. You don't want it super straight. You want a nice little bow in the line and that's it. Just something to where maybe when you reel the when you reel one time, that brings up all that slack. Or when you pull just a little bit, it brings up all that slack. Just a subtle little bow in the line because that's gonna allow you to see that line tick and move or swim off. And it's gonna possibly give you enough of a feeling because there's not enough slack to make up for a bite, that little subtle bite and that movement of the line, you're still gonna be able to feel it with that semi-slack line. You know, I think you can fish a jig year round. I have a jig tied on all the time. I think you can just get those jig bites, you know, pretty much year round. I think there are different times of year where the jig's gonna do better than others. And to narrow those, those times a year down for you, I've written an ebook. Anybody that's a part of this coaching program should have already gotten that ebook. If you haven't, make sure to email me. I will send it to you because I want you to have this information. But inside that ebook, it talks about crawfish specifically, talks about the different times of year where they're getting up on top of these rocks and they're exposing themselves so these fish can come down and they're gonna eat those crawfish. They're gonna, those bass are gonna take advantage of those crawfish up on top of these rocks. It's an easy meal for them. And that's when these bass are gonna be eating these crawdads much more you know, quickly, much more often. And that's when you're gonna wanna imitate that crawdad with this jig and that's when you're gonna catch a lot of jig fish. It's gonna be something that's gonna help you out. It's gonna keep you, you know, in that you know, time of year pattern where you can follow these fish around where they're transitioning from maybe the bluegill to crawdads or crawdads to shad or, or whatever the time of year is. But this ebook narrows all that down. It's gonna help you out. It's gonna give you an idea on where to start and what to fish so that way you can match what those fish are going after for that time of year. So the next time you go to the lake, I really recommend you try to fish a finesse jig, that three eighth ounce, that quarter ounce jig, you know, find some rocks. It doesn't matter if it's submerged rocks, you know, offshore on a point or a, or a rocky area coming into the lake or just an area where you know there's some, some rock in that middle area. Just cast it out there, get used to what those rocks feel like, you know, get bit on a jig, catch some jig fish. I think that you need to Give this some time. I don't think this is the technique where you're gonna go out there for the first time and catch a ton of fish on it. I think this is a technique that you have to put time into. I think you need to commit yourself to fishing it. Maybe only bring jigs with, jigs with you on your next trip out so that way you're committed to fishing the jig. You're committed to giving it some time. 
you know, I think that that can be really effective when you're trying to learn new techniques is to only bring those with you to the lake. So that way you only have that option. So it forces you to commit to that technique. It forces you to learn something new. Maybe you don't catch fish, but big deal because you're learning how to fish a new technique and down the road, that's going to help you out. So once again, I really want to thank you for being a part of my online coaching program. It means a lot to me that you're here, that you're watching, that you're, that you're learning from me. I really hope that this video has helped you learn more about how to catch fish on a jig. I think a jig is definitely a technique you need to learn how to throw and you need to have confidence in. My hope is that after watching this video and applying the information I gave you in this video, it's gonna give you confidence to go out to the lake for your next trip and catch some fish on a jig. Good luck, let me know how it goes. If you have any questions, Feel free to contact me, send me an email, send me a message on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Just get a hold of me and I'll answer your question.